Hello and welcome. Um, I just want to do a very quick 10, 10 or 15 minute uh, tutorial on my brushes and the type of brushes I use. So um, I had a couple of questions about my types of brushes um, and how I get my effects with grasses and all that kind of thing. So I'm just going to give you a quick one and I might do one or two little quick um, snippets on a canvas then. Just a couple of little techniques to show you how I create different types of foliage and grass, that kind of thing. Let's start. now. I have little stubby brushes, okay? The small green stubby brushes, you see me using them all the time. So, when they're new, they're just nice and flat, like this, okay? It's just a very soft, synthetic hair, that's all. And what I do then is I leave the paint in them, sometimes, just overnight. And that then will thicken up the hair slightly. I then clean it the following day, I wash it out. But that kind of thickens up the hair just down by the furrow hair, okay? You can see the difference there now, there's a slight difference isn't there, this one is kind of splayed outwards isn't it? And that's perfect for trees and foliage and for grass and for bushes and all that kind of thing because it gives you a very random effect and when it's really really worn then it looks like this. This is very bad now, this is probably almost close to being put in the bin, okay? But it's still fine, I can still get a couple of bushes and things like that. I don't throw old brushes out because sometimes they're the best. The old brushes can be the best brushes to use. Um, I also have a medium little stubby brush, okay, now when they're new again they're very flat and pointy but this one is starting to build up a paint inside in it, so it's opening slightly you see. So I have other small, uh, just regular flat short handle brushes then and this one is very splayed out, you can see that, they're perfect for little bushes. So all I use is basically flat brushes, flat synthetic brushes, okay? These are them here. So you can see now those, they're all flat, very, very worn. Um, this kind of a brush is perfect now for trees and bushes and foliage. Um, it's amazing, most people will look at these brushes and think they're just ready for the trash, throw them in the bin. But they're perfect. You can get a lot of different types of um, effects with these little brushes. The only round brushes I would use would be um, my round stubby, okay? Or any little round soft brush will do fine for uh, branches and for tree trunks, that kind of thing, okay? Just regular, let me see if I can move my head out of the way, there we go. Regular little flat, uh, little pointy round brushes, okay? For detail. They're just all synthetic, soft, cheap synthetic brushes. They're not expensive at all. Um, in fact, the most expensive brush I have here is a couple of these filberts. Alright. I just use these filberts. These are System 3 Doyler Roni acrylic brushes, okay? Um, I used to use these in the past. These are soft synthetic as well, but I'm just not a big fan of filbert brushes. I just, I, I, they never kind of stuck with me, you know. Um, filbert brushes, they're, they're lovely to use, but they're just not for me really. And these were quite, quite expensive brushes. These brushes were like maybe, no, seven or ten euros each. Um, whereas these types of brushes, all these little cheap flat brushes, I might buy them for. 6 euros each maybe, or maybe 4 euros each, something like that. So, you know, sometimes expensive is not always best. I also use different sizes of fan brushes, okay? Lots of different sized fan brushes. Fan brushes are the best brush, I think they're fantastic. They really, really are. You can do so much with them, lots of different techniques, um, even when they get really hard and full of paint like this, they're still perfect, you can use them for a wide range of techniques, okay? Um, that's my brushes really, I just use lots of big chunky flat brushes, you can get some fabulous techniques with these types of brushes, dabbing them for trees and that type of stuff, okay? It gives you a very natural kind of a landscape. Let's try a couple here on a piece of canvas. Um, I'll use my canvas pad just to show you some techniques with the fan brush first, okay? Don't go anywhere. Okay, um, right. I have a paper palette here, okay? Just a very quick paper palette. Little cheap paper palette. I'm going to start 
wait, let me just fix my microphone here now so you can hear me properly. Um, I'm just going to start with giving a little, let's do, do a little couple of samples of, um, say, a green field or something like that, okay? I'm just going to take a small brush, dampen that with a little turpentine. Let's take some yellow. Let's take a little bit of black. And that will give us a nice green, won't it? Nice soft green. Let's add a little Naples yellow to this. Now the canvas paper may be a little on the dry side, okay? So let's just work with this and see what we can do. Now let's just do, say, I don't know, let's just go halfway across, okay, like that. Let's just put a very light, watery green background in, just here and there, okay? Look, I just want to do a small couple of little different techniques for you, just with the fan brush, I suppose, um, and... Because the person who was asking me was just asking me primarily about the, cat, the the fan brush and what kind of techniques you can do with it and how I get my techniques with the fan brush. So I'm just going to give you a very quick kind of um, sample of what you can do with a fan brush. Uh, how to create nice little grasses and that kind of thing, okay? Now you can see this paper is very dry. It's just soaking right into that paper immediately almost. Now it's fine for sketching and practicing. Absolutely fine. But for a painting, no, I wouldn't. Just buy a piece of canvas, okay? But it's great for this kind of thing. Now, let's just go get a fan brush. I have a couple, a couple of different sizes. Now, I don't buy expensive, you can, you can buy really expensive fan brushes if you wish. You don't really have to. These are all just cheap, cheap fan brushes, okay? Now, for this, I will use, let me see now. I want to find a nice soft, soft-ish kind of a one. I'll try this. Okay, just a regular fan brush. I'm going to start off now putting some highlights up in the background, okay? And we'll walk to dark then. So this is, say, if you're creating a field, yes? Now, let me make sure that's recording. That's recording. If you're, if you're creating some kind of a grassy field and you want to create some texture in the distance, let's try this. Let's take some white and a hint of yellow. So you could create... Imagine you have light on a field, hitting the field, okay? Just simply go across with your fan brush like this, okay? Now, it might be a good idea just to add a little turpentine just to help it flow off of your brush a little better. Now, my brush is a little bit kind of worn and it's kind of, there's a lot of paint on it. If you're using a brand new fan brush, it's perfect for this. You don't need, you, won't, you wouldn't really need to use any turpentine or thinners in this, okay? So, let's just go along there, and it's going to sort of disappear off into that distant colour. It's just going to fade away off into the distance, look. Just like that. You can hear me pressing down really hard on this now, just to make it sort of fade away off. As it comes in then, just keep dabbing. I'm using the fan brush flat like this, okay? Just so you know. Now I'm gonna start going to a slightly greener color. So let's take some yellow, a little hint of black. I'm only using yellow and black for this now because yellow and black make a very nice earthy kind of a green. Then we have another green coming in. Soften that up into the yellow just a little. Now I'm going to start going darker. Okay? A little turpentine. Some black. Some yellow. And I think that's even a good enough green there now. Look, watch this. So, if you wanted to create some nice grasses, okay? All you're doing is flicking the fan brush upwards. Look. And you can go left and right. Again, I'm, I'm only using the very tip of the fan brush, that's all. Now I'll take a bit more yellow in that. It's a lot thicker now, this paint, okay? It's not just watery paint, it's nice thick paint on the very tip of my fan brush. So you can go along like this, all the way. Okay, Move your fan brush around from side to side. And you could add in colours as you go. So look, I could add in a bit of burnt umber with yellow into that. 
to make it a slightly brown, muddier kind of a green. Now give it a wipe with some tissue, pick up a little of the yellow and then you want to lighten this slightly as it kind of goes off into the distance it's going to fade into a lighter colour. So you're not going to bring this dark colour all the way right up to the very top, okay? And when you get to the distance then, you're just kind of dabbing it across, you see? To sort of let that fade off into the distance. You see? So now we already have a nice kind of a grassy field. Now what you could do is when it's really close to you, you could go really dark with this. Okay? So a lot of black, and you could even put a hint of blue into it as well if you like. Tiny hint of phthalo blue. Just down around the front where it's very close because it will be very dark there, okay? You see? Just like this. Now, you could, if you wanted to, let's just give this a clean with some turpentine and dry it on some tissue. Um, create, I'm going to get another fan brush now, something that's nice and sort of thin up on top, okay? I don't want to use a very, very broad, thick fan brush for this. So I have a nice kind of a thin one here, it's not bad. It's very warm, but it's okay. Let's put some suggestions of grassy reeds kind of sticking up here and there, yes? Let's go with some Naples yellow and a little burnt umber. Now, just lots of thick paint on its own, nothing else, okay? And a little yellow. So, Naples yellow, cadmium yellow, and a little burnt umber. And then what you could do is, with the fan brush at a horizontal position like this, just go like that, look. You see? That just gives you a lot of movement in the front of the, the grassy area. You see, it just creates all these little things. Now you could say, let's get some, let's get some burnt sienna. Okay, put a hint of burnt sienna there, just so we can mess around with some colors. Let's take some burnt sienna on the tip of our brush and some yellow. And create some nice awesome sort of reeds coming up. You see? Like that. Isn't that lovely? So we did all this now just with one brush, our little fan brush. And you could go even higher with some of these if you want. Go right up like that, look. And I'm turning into the painting because that will draw your eye into the painting, you see. So you can see it's starting to work already, look. Turn it into your painting slightly. Let's get some burnt sienna. So already we have the impression of lots of lovely reeds and sort of grasses popping up from the sides. Isn't that lovely? So that's just a quick kind of a way of creating lovely grassy effects with your fan brush. It's nice and simple but it does work, you see? Then we can just take a small pointy brush, like this, and we could take some, let's say a burnt sienna, okay? Lots of burnt sienna on the tip of your brush, and we could just go along and give it some of these little, I don't know what you'd call them. Um, there's a specific name for these now, but I just don't know what they are. But you can see what I mean. Just put little dabs of that here and there. And it just, it makes the painting busy, okay? It just adds a little something to the painting. So, you can see what I mean now. Isn't that just wonderful? A nice simple way of creating different effects in a painting. You could even just take some white as well. Why not? Add a hint of white. It could be little flowers and stuff like that sticking up around the place. So, there we are. A nice simple scene. Now, there's another one that you can do with the fan brush. So, I'm going to 
let's say you have uh, a walkway, okay? Let's just draw a little walkway there for a moment. Just a little bit of green. Let's say you have a little walkway coming along like this. All right, going off in the distance, okay? Another one coming down like this. And then you have these kind of bushy things that come along and stick up like that. Now these are two separate paintings, all right? So what I'm going to do first is take, um, let me see, I'll take a little flat brush, okay? And I'm going to put a nice dark green on that. I'm just going to paint that in a nice dark green for now. I need some more yellow, the yellow is gone. Okay, lots of cadmium yellow. Now let's make a nice dark green and cover this in a nice rich green. And I'm going to show you how, how to create these sort of bushes, grassy bushes at the side of a walkway, okay? That they kind of come up and they flick over and outwards. It's very, very simple. It looks complicated when you look at a painting and you see these, you think, God, that, that must have taken a long time to paint. But it's actually quite simple. Okay, let me show you. So what I do is, first of all, anyway, the first step you could do is use your flat stubby, okay? Or any regular flat brush would do fine for this. Look, it's just a regular flat stubby brush. What I'm gonna do is just dampen slightly, only slightly. Then I'm gonna take a dark green. I'll take some black and some yellow. And perhaps a bit of brown as well, look. Let's just warm it slightly, make it nice and dark. Or even a bit of tail or blue as well. Now, with that thick paint, look, it's nice and thick on my brush. I'm going to start at the bottom, and I'm going to flick up. Like that, okay? And as I'm going, I'm kind of flicking it outwards. I'm carving it outwards with the tip of my brush. You see? And that's already giving you the impression that it's falling outwards towards the road or the footpath or whatever it is. It's leading your eye outwards. Okay, you see? Just a little flick. Now, you could leave it at that. Let me just put a bit of brown and a bit of black down at the very, very base. Look, I want it really dark down there. And then I'm going to put that down for a moment. I'm then going to switch to a fan brush. Let me find a nice soft fan brush, okay? Um, no, that's not good enough. No, that won't do. Hmm. Where's the one I had? Yeah, I'll go back to this, this one here, okay? Little fan brush. Dampen that. And I want to create some light on the top of this, but I want to create the light kind of falling over, coming over like this. So I'm going to take some cadmium yellow, with some Naples yellow. Lots of stick paint now, okay? And I'm gonna start down here. I'm going along like this, okay? Along the top. Now what I'm going to do is, this is very, very important, okay? Um, I'm gonna start turning it slightly. Okay? And I'm using this corner of the brush here, okay? And I'm gonna start turning that slightly down. And I'm kind of softening it into the darker green just a little already now you can see it's forming this curve on the top of the mound of grass okay just like this see now the problem i'm having here is this paper is so it's after soaking up my paint so all of this dark color is dry um, if this was normally on a normal canvas this would all be very wet still and this yellow would merge nicely into the darker color underneath. But you can see it's kind of staying. It's not really mixing. So that's the disadvantage of painting on paper. So look, I'm going around like I'm bringing my curves around like this all the time, okay? And it's just a fan brush, the shape of the fan brush, which is doing this. But I'm turning it as I go like this, you see? So, look at that. So we already have a nice little bush. The impression of a big bush which is kind of turning over. Do you see what I mean? 
And then we could, let's just imagine, there's a little footpath along here. Let's take a little bit of black in that actually, and a little bit of white, because it would be more of a grey. There we go. Burnt sienna with black and white is lovely. Little black, little white, and a little burnt sienna. Makes a lovely colour. Makes a lovely soft dot kind of a grey. Okay, it's like a dot track kind of a grey. Push that in there, just quickly, just to give you a better example of the scene. So, there we go, lovely, doubly all the way in there, soften it in, here and there. Don't make it completely straight, okay, you can wiggle it in and wiggle it out. Pull some of the green out as well, into the brown look. That will help with the composition, of even up there. Soften it away off. Now, if you want to create some dirt on that, okay, you want to create a nice rough kind of a texture. Let's just take some burnt umber, a little black, on the tip of the fan brush, very, very thin, okay? And let's give it a sort of a pebbled kind of a feeling, okay? Look. Just dab it across very gently. It's hardly touching the, can the canvas paper, okay? It's just very dry, and I'm only putting on a little, just here and there. Then let that kind of soften the way off, disappear off into that colour. Look, already it's looking a bit rough, isn't it? Now let's clean the fan brush, just quickly. Now it's not spotless, you see it? It's fine. Let's take some Naples yellow and a little white. And let's go up here and do the same. So we're going to have some light coming down, catching this kind of muddy track, this dirty roadway. Soften it down again. I'm hardly touching the canvas, okay? Look, just here and there. How about that? Isn't that lovely? Now again with the same fan brush, I'm going to give it a quick clean. I'm going to take some cadmium yellow and white. It's very, very bright now, very whitey yellow. I'm just going to give that a little bit of light here and there, look. Just on the top. How about that? And you can then, if you wish, with that same colour, give one or two little flicks up. See? Just to add a bit of interest to it. Now we can do the same with this side over here. So let me just get some thinners because my thinners is gone. And we can create a little nice area over here. So I'll take my small little flat brush. Let's get some black and some yellow again. Fill this area in here. Now, I must just put a little bit of tape on this corner because it keeps sticking out and it's getting really annoying. Okay. Well, right. Nice dark colour over here. Let's just fill this in very quickly. And then I'm going to take my fan brush. And I'm going to go for a nice dark colour on my fan brush, okay? Let's go for some phthalo blue, some black, and a bit of yellow. Let's make this a very rich dark green now. I have a tiny amount of turpentine in this as well. Let's just go and push that up. Look, push it right up into the roadway. Now that looks a little bit dull, doesn't it? So let's add a little bit of cadmium yellow and burnt umber to it. Just paint, no thinners. Just lots of paint. Let's get some real yellow on its own. And you can see I'm turning towards the footpath, you see? So your eyes again are drawn in. Now let's go really dark down in the corner. Really dark, look at that. Just flick it around and a little curve. Okay, 
So that's that. Then what you could do is take another fan brush or the same one that's just clean, okay? Take a nice clean fan brush again and take some yellow. So cadmium yellow, plenty of white. And we can create, uh, let me see now, let's create some of these little things again. Look like that, look. There, you see? Isn't that wonderful? Nice and simple. There we are. We take a little bit of white, a little bit of Naples yellow. Just pop some of that in here as well. You could have all different types of flowers growing out of these banks, okay? And there we are. Now, wasn't that just so simple? It was so easy to create. It only took me a couple of minutes. Let's just take a bit of black, put a hint of black here and there. Just along. Okay. And two very simple scenes done. With just a fan with just a fan brush, a flat brush, and a pointy brush. Okay? Um very very simple. So do try it. Um let me just zoom in here so you can see it properly. Okay? Now how's that? Two simple scenes done with a fan brush. Um it's just a case of turning the fan brush as you go. Okay, don't be afraid of the fan brush. It's one of the best brushes in your set. It's the easiest one to use. Uh, it's, you could even take some, let's just take some crimson. We haven't used any crimson. Okay, a little bit of crimson on the corner of your brush like this. And let's just add some little flowers. Okay, just a suggestion. Just like that. Just a hint here and there is enough just to catch your eye. Okay, and if you wanted to add more light onto this, let's just take a bit of white on its own. And let's just add a little hint of light just here and there, look. You can see how I'm kind of turning my brush as I go. I'm using the shape of this fan brush to create that lovely curve. You see, it's just catching some light just here and there. So I hope that has helped. Okay, you can see now two simple scenes. I like the grassy one in the distance. It's done just very simply, isn't it? Flick your brush upwards. Uh, when I'm doing this, I always put in um, a base coat, a base color. So a medium color, and then put in some brights, and then put in some darks, okay? And the two then can merge together. That's generally what I do. So let me just zoom back here now. now I hope that has helped. Um, it's just a quick one that I wanted to do for you, just to give you little hints and tips with the fan brush, specifically the fan brush, and even this one as well, okay? That small, flat, stubby. They're excellent, excellent, excellent brushes. So, uh, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that small little one. If you have any questions, please do let me know. Um, I have a very big, 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 big canvas coming with that lovely scene of all those mountains in the distance, okay? Um, I forget the name of it now, I check out the name, I'll let you know. But I have that coming very soon on my channel. Um, do subscribe, thank you so much. Uh, happy painting. I'll see you very soon.